We are we are scheduled to start at least some of us who've been planning this session uh, somewhere in the vicinity of four o'clock. Three. Three o'clock. And uh, some of us need to get back to meals and so forth. So uh, let me introduce Wallace and Oscus, who is a Lithuanian who has been around town for a long time. And he is going to make a presentation. Can't quite hear you. <coughs> he is going to make a presentation on the Marxist roots of, fem of feminism. Uh, that's an old, an old twist. Uh, with, or I should say, a new twist on an old topic, and uh, he has in mind, as I understand, uh, bifurcating the topic. Yes, and two parts next week will be uh, second. And. Uh, so we'll see where we stand at the end of a good session today. Okay, a little over an hour, an hour, a little, maybe an hour and ten minutes. All right. We better start. <laughs> so all of us are here to lead our cogitation on Marxist roots of feminism. Okay, I, I hope you don't mind if I remain seated. It's more convenient for me just to see uh, on screen and, and Chris, but it's, there's no difference for him. And welcome back to our series about related to Frankfurt School and cultural Marxism. We already have a a lecture a few months ago about uh, Frankfurt School itself and after that we had about uh, the origins of uh, world racism and today I'm going to speak about as Orwell just said about uh, Marxist roots of radical feminism and while I'm myself not, not that big at studying Feminism, maybe I should study more, but I have to admit that I'm very big at studying communism and, and that, that's a topic that keeps me going because I happen to spend half of my, almost half of my life living under that so-called paradise on earth system. And first I want to explain why I picked so kind of sort of strange title for today's lecture, which is The Goddess That Failed. Sounds strange, but it wasn't really my invention. The Goddess of Faith? That Failed. Failed. Uh, there was a book published back in 1949 which title was The God That Failed and in that book there were six essays with the testimonies of famous ex-communists Arthur Kessler, Ignacio Salon, André Gide, Stefan Spender and a few others and the common theme of the essay, of those all essays was the author's disillusionment with an abandonment of communism. The promotional byline to that book was six famous men 
tell how they change their minds about communism. And then Kenneth Minogue, who is a professor of political science at the London School of Economics, published an article back in 1991 in National Review magazine in November of 1991, and the title of that article, which actually was a cover story, was The Goddess That Failed. So he just transformed original article, uh, title of uh, that famous book, and from God made it into God. And that article was all about what is known today as radical feminism. And the very first line of that article is where he says, and I quote, radical feminism comes from the same stable as Marxism. And then he says, Professor Minoff says, and I quote him again from that same article, the comparison with Marxism reveals the essence of the feminist movement. And then, also, in the, in the view of this same professor, I quote again, but from yet another article called How Civilizations Fall, which was published in April of 2001 in a magazine that's called The New Criterion, where he says, the radical feminist revolution is nothing less than a destruction of our civilization. It has all happened in such a way that people have not yet realized what has happened. End of quote. Well, mankind have, has entered a new dark age without really knowing at all what is happening today. And while, as I said in my earlier lecture on Frankfurt School and cultural Marxism, to understand its truly revolutionary impact, you have to realize that the 60s didn't start in psychedelic 1960s. We have to dig deeper into Marxism and communism and look for the roots of feminism there. So today we will talk mainly about roots, while next week we'll talk about fruits of this phenomenon called feminism. Is feminism really a mask, mask for Marxism? Well, you probably saw t-shirts and coffee cups that says, feminism is the radical notion that women are people. Women, so, women, women are people. people. Sounds people. 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 Yeah. people. Sounds fun, funny, isn't it? <laughs> and this saying is attributed, by the way, to Cheris Cremery, who is, or at least was recently, a professor at the Center for the Study of Women in Society here, right at the University of Oregon. She's the author of several books, such as A Feminist Dictionary, as well as dozens of chapters in various books and articles on feminism. She's a co-editor of the new Routledge International Encyclopedia of Women. And now, just recently, some Japanese guy, Satoshi Kanazawa, who is an evolutionary psychologist at London School of Economics and Political Science in the Department of Psychology and uh, honorary research fellow in the Department of Psychology at University College in London, and co-author of a book called uh, Why Beautiful People Have More Daughters, published in 2007, changed that phrase to feminism is the radical notion that women are men. <laughs> Sounds even funnier than the original one. <laughs> and uh, I took this from his very recent article published as recently as August 2nd of this year in a magazine called Evolutionary Psychology and that article is called Why Modern Feminism is Illogical, Unnecessary and Evil. And the author is Satoshi Kanazawa. 
Excuse me. Could you repeat that? What what you just said? Uh, the acoustics in this room. No, well, I can't really repeat everything I say. We have a lot to cover. And okay. You okay. just uh, make note, and I can just give you all those after. Okay. World and America have seen women's movements before, of course, reform movements seeking for women the political and cultural pri privileges held by men. Very presented what best-selling author and professor of philosophy, Christina Hoff Summers, in book which is called Who Stole Feminism, calls equity feminism. To distinguish them from today's gender feminism, which is the radical variety of feminism. In his very famous book, Slouching Towards Gamora, Modern Liberalism and American Decline, Robert Bork, who served as Solicitor General, as Acting Attorney General of the United States, and as a United States Court of Appeal judge, and who was President Reagan's nominee to Supreme Court, writes, and I quote from this book, page 195, he says, many people suppose that feminism today is a continuation of the reform movement of the past. They occasionally notice a ranting Bella Abzak or an icy Gloria Steinem, but imagine them to be merely the fraud of extremism on, on an otherwise sensible movement. That is not the case. The extremists are the movement. What do moderate so they say old-fashioned equity feminist Daphne Petai and Norit Korch write about radical feminism in the universities today is true of the movement as a whole. Today's radical feminism, they say, is, I quote from their book called Professing Feminism, Cautionary Tales from the Strange World of Women's Studies, they say, not merely about feminism is not merely about equal rights for women. Feminism aspires to be much more than this. It bids to be a totalizing scheme resting on a grand theory, one that is an, as all-inclusive as Marxism, as assured of its ability to unmask hidden meanings as Freudian psychology, and as fervent in its condemnation of upper states as evangelical fundamentalism. Feminist theory provides a doctrine of original sin. The world's evils originate in male supremacy. End of quote. Basically, the ideology of today's radical feminism demands that the entire world be seen as a conspiracy against women. <laughs> 